why don't we start our conversation right there? I did the deep dive uh, like the Niners have been doing this week, I'm sure, uh, except I'm sure their deep dive is deeper, I hope, than mine, um, on these four teams. And I have decided that it's funny. The more you research, the more the, the picture changes. And if I guess, when I, I guess what you're going to say, can I guess that the more you research, the more you like is how you're going to describe this? Yeah. The more, and, and the more I, I went into it fearing one team and then I came out of it fearing a different team. I'm going to guess that the more you research, the more you actually think the Packers are a good football team. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm a little bit afraid of the Green Bay Packers. Um, just because I'm a personnel guy at heart and they have done a great job. When I say they, I'm talking about Brian Gutekunst. You, what'd you call me? I said, Brian Gutekunst. Uh, he is the general manager of said green Bay Packers. And, you know, they've got a good little combination going there with Matt LaFleur as their head coach and Brian Gutekunst as the general manager in Gutekunst has done a really good job. Um, and you look around their roster and I thought, you know, without Aaron, you know, post Aaron Rodgers, that the Packers were going to be kind of in this kind of spin in their wheels territory for five years. No, 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 no. That's not the case. Um, they're loaded. Uh, they're really, really good. And it's because of good Kunst in these drafts, you know, he, traded up for Jordan Love in the 2020 draft. Now Jordan Love is playing incredible. 18 touchdowns, one pick in his most recent run. Um, he's doing. He's playing at a really high level. And then you look around and say, well, yeah, but he's got no weapons. Oh, no, no. Think again. They've got Aaron Jones still doing his thing, running and catching. You got A.J. Dillon, though he's a little banged up. Um, but the rest of those weapons, the two young tight ends, Luke Musgrave, the, the kid from Oregon State, Tucker Craft, um, you know, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Jaden Reed just had a hundred yard day last week. Bo Melton, Dontavious, Dontavian Wicks is really the hottest of their receivers. Yeah. And, you know, he's drafted Zach Tom at, at, at right tackle. He's drafted Rasheed Walker at left tackle. He's drafted Elgin Jenkins at left guard. All three of those guys are, are stalwarts. And then you look at their defensive line. You know, uh, Kenny Clark, Devontae Wyatt, Rashawn Gary, all number one picks. Carl Brooks is playing his butt off. He was a six-round pick. Um, and on the back end, you got guys like Darnell Savage and Jair Alexander. It's not a perfect secondary, but Anders Carlson is a nice ki young kicker. They drafted him this year in the sixth round. Uh, it's amazing. They, get, they got their kicker in the sixth round. They didn't have to use a third-round pick and a kicker. But uh, Gutekunst has done an amazing job, and the Packers are playing good football. And I think there's a very good chance, guy, that they're going to roll into Dallas and beat the Cowboys and send uh, Mike McCarthy into his next job because I think Jerry Jones will fire McCarthy if he loses, if the Cowboys lose this game. Green Bay's the seven seed, Dallas is the two seed. Um, <laughs> I don't know how you feel about it, but. Personally, I mean, they're the, they're the youngest team in football. Uh, their average age is 25.6 years of age. LaFleur's 56 and 27 as a career, as a you know, career in the NFL, as a, as a record. And, you know, they started off two and five, and now they've won seven of their last 10, including three straight. I think they're going to beat the Cowboys. What do you think of Green Bay? So if you check the tape, as I did, we have receipts. I didn't have time to actually record it and present it to you today. But uh, uh, six months ago, we did a video. It's called, people can find it on Larry's channel, The Ceiling and the Floor of the 49ers. It's you, me, and right. John. All three of us have different backgrounds. You have 12 Niner logos behind you in that video. Uh, Those before logos. The, before the police came. Gone. <laughs> gone. Uh, and you asked, who's, who's going to be like a surprise playoff team this year? John said the Steelers. I said the Packers. And the reason I said the Packers was the weakness of the NFC and that in the three drives of Jordan Love that I watched last year, I thought this guy's just, he's got, he's got something. I don't know how much he's got, but he's got something. And then he went and had one of the quietest 
32 touchdown, 11 interception seasons in recent memory. Um, the fact that Aaron didn't really play this year for the Jets made it feel like the Jets got bad luck, but it made it feel like the Packers knew exactly what they were doing for the second time in a row, which is pretty incredible. Um, I don't think they beat Dallas. I like Green Bay. I'm impressed with them. I think their coach is excellent. I think their quarterback's got a chance. I'm not a huge – people who have watched me or listened to me, Larry, no, I'm not a big believer in – I think Mike McCarthy's floor is is high enough, but I, I don't think that's – you're just not a championship. And people say, well, he's won one, I understand, with a Hall of Fame quarterback. I don't think the combination of him and Dak is a true – you're not winning a Super Bowl with that, I don't believe. I think they should move on from McCarthy. They'd be – they would be lucky to lose this game if it means they can hire Jim Harbaugh, but they won't do that. Like they're not desperate enough. Um, but I think the problem is <clears throat> that you're asking Jordan Love now, who's not a rookie quarterback, but he's not a playoff quarterback. You're talking about the potential. And I guess this would change, right? If he had just gone on the road, beaten Dallas with a good defense, and then he's coming in to play the Niners. But I think a player who's not really familiar with the 49ers. Uh, and is young and is on the road is at a severe disadvantage when it comes to the playoffs. Now, his coach is familiar, right? Like there's all these matchups. You go through the list, the Rams and Niners are familiar. The These Packers, like the Jordan Love Packers, not familiar, but LaFleur and Shanahan are familiar. The 49ers and the Cowboys are familiar. This Eagles, Niners, they're familiar. Like there's so much familiarity in the NFC. They've even played the Bucks a few times in recent years. So um, uh, I think they, they're they in pretty good shape regardless of who they play. I think for Jordan Love, the X factor for me would be it's a really tough spot for him. And for that reason, I don't I don't think Green Bay would be the Niner, beat the Niners. Um, I think the, the, the I'm not going to say the worst combination, but the best quarterback coach combination in the NFC is Stafford and McVay, right? That's the best combo um, that the Niners could face. And so I, I I just look at it like which team has placed good enough defense that if they've got a star quarterback, he can rise up and beat you. And, you know, the Rams are that category. I don't think Dak is going to rise up and beat you, but that team, you know, they got good players, even though they don't run the ball. Um, I think it's a little too early for Jordan Love to win two road playoff games. Kaepernick did it. Yeah, he did. He, out he of did. the whack. Then Jordan Love comes out of the Mountain West, but an old whack school, Utah State. Uh, but, uh, that's, that would be, I think a, a very, very, very difficult thing for love to overcome right now. But I am, I am pro Packers and I, I'm with you. Like there's just something that would be a really interesting matchup because it feels so different in the same way that the national championship game on Monday felt a little different. Uh, I think that would make that matchup pretty fun because you got the historics, but there's also something fresh about seeing Jordan love instead of Aaron Rodgers. The only thing about the Rams and, and the, the deeper dive I did on the Rams, you know, I just can't talk myself into the Rams being more than one third of a football team. You know, they, they, they can score 30 and they will score 30 and they've scored uh, 30 against some really good defenses this year. I mean, they, uh, the Niners, the Ravens, I think the Browns, they, they play really well on the road against the Ravens. Yeah. Staff I mean, excellent. They almost won that game. I mean, they literally in almost the beat the Ravens in Baltimore. Um, and it wasn't like the last week of the year, like, you know, it wasn't a throwaway game. It was just a, a game, what, week 15 or whatever it was, um, you know, but Aaron Donald and not a ton else on defense. Um, I kind of like John Johnson a little bit on the back end for the Rams. I kind of like the rookie um, from Tennessee who had a big sack on Stafford, Byron Young coming off the edge, a lot of speed there kind of like Kobe Turner and the year he's had next to Donald up front, but I don't see the, I don't see the edge rushers. I don't see the linebackers. I don't see the secondary difference makers. Um, you know, I, Taylor Rapp is now in, is now what in Houston or wherever he is now at Buffalo. Uh, he's moved on. So I don't know. I mean, their, their, their special teams are bad. I mean, the Rams are 32nd. And special teams DVOA. It's one of the, it's historically bad. It's like one of the worst special teams ever. Yeah. So, I mean, I just, I don't really fear. I mean, I fear the Rams just because divisional opponent, 
and they can score 30 and probably will score 30. So that they're, it's going to be a close game, even against the 49er defense. But, um, you know, I mean, and and the Rams for a defense are maybe the, one of the toughest teams to defend in the entire league. you got two receivers with crazy ball skills in Puka and Cup. you got a quarterback who throws darts. you got another receiver in Tutu Atwell is a true burner. So, and they got three tight ends that all can catch the ball. Um, and their O line's a little bit better. Avila at left guard has been a real find. So I don't, you know, they're, I they, Larry, they got a really good offense. I don't think the recipe of Jordan Love dropping back to throw 36 times beats the 40. That's just not, I don't think that's the recipe to beat the 49ers if you're the Packers. Yeah. No, I know, but they can, so, they can hit I mean, Darren Jones. I, I'm just looking at this guy. He's throwing it 40 times a game almost. Yeah. You know, they lost to the Giants and the Bucks. Uh, they beat the Panthers, the Vikings, and the Bears this month. Now, they beat the Chiefs and the Lions and the Chargers, too. They had that stretch that was awesome. But, you know, it's not like their last month has been great. L Giants, L Bucks, three point win against Carolina, beat the Panthers, and then beat the Bears. I mean, beat the Vikings, then beat the Bears. Yeah. I think they've had a good year. Like, they are on the upward swing. They the only thing about Green Bay is that I don't you know I'm looking at the way Love has played in the last month and he's got last eighteen last eight games eighteen touchdowns one pick hmm. so he's taking care of the football and the one thing about Green Bay is Savage can pick you off Alexander can pick you off they've got their they're developing I mean they've got some big time guys coming at the quarterback. Up front, I've really liked Carl Brooks a lot in the lead up to the draft this year. I know the Niners looked at him. Um, you know, he is a real talented guy. He's just a guy off the bench. I mean, but he's 300 pounds. Uh, I played at Bowling Green, where's number 94. Um, you know, but then Rashawn Gary is scary. I mean, he really is scary. Devontae Wyatt, equally scary. Kenny Clark, you used to be on this line kind of by himself, naked. Now he's got help. Um, so, you know, Preston Smith is a is a veteran pass rusher. Quay Walker can really, really run on that second level. Uh, Campbell's obviously been a good player for years. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I, I'm, I do. Do you think Green Bay has a chance to beat Dallas? Oh yeah, yeah. Everyone, you're giving them a shot. Dallas, like. Anybody Dallas can win a bunch of games, but you can beat Dallas because they're not. I don't think Dallas. Dallas is all. If you get in a close game with Dallas, they're gonna screw something up. They're gonna, you know, if you put them down with two minutes left, they Dak might lead the game winning drive, but they also might move the ball on the spot and then get a false start. I mean, it, they're just not quite buttoned down enough. I don't think. Um, to be unbeatable. Green Bay, by the way, 23rd in the league in yard per carry defense. Almost four and a half yards per carry allowed. On the road, that's almost five. Um, but yeah, I don't I, I don't think Dallas is I I people think I don't respect that. I, I respect the Cowboys to a certain degree. I just think their cat their ceiling is capped. And I think they can lose at any moment. Um, but I think they win this game. No Stefan Gilmore. Does that change your opinion at all? For, for Dallas? No, I, I just think it's going to be really tough for Jordan Love to go there on the road and and beat. D- Dax had a good year. They can score too. You know, if it's one of these games where you throw 37 times, fine. Dallas will, Dak will go throw the ball 37 times. He might throw two picks, but um, I just think this is, like this to me is the Cowboys' wheelhouse. Like this is the kind of playoff game they celebrate. Like, yeah, yeah, we did it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But they don't they don't play with the big boys in the postseason. They haven't. If they do, then that'll be it's the there's a first time for everything. So if you're Dallas, you're hoping this is the first time. But that's this is the kind of game they win and pat themselves on the back for winning. Um Robbie says Packers defense let Bryce Young throw for three hundred plus yards, not impressed. Yeah, I mean, if there's one thing, you know, to to feel good about is that Joe Barry's defense, Joe Barry's a D coordinator for the Packers. You know, it's it's not been consistent. And as Robbie points out here, they've had their duds on defense. But I'll say this. Green Bay is coming. I mean, we're, everybody talks about Detroit, 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 Detroit. 
And Detroit is an up and coming team. Don't get me wrong. But Green Bay is going to run with them going forward. And Green Bay is going to be a power in the NFC because they're those teams are hitting in the draft at a really high high rate. And when you hit in the draft and you have that good of talent, um, that's you know, eventually you're gonna be you're gonna be there. And Green Bay and Detroit, I think, are gonna be the the main you know, two of the main contenders in the NFC with the 49ers uh 